The Dilemma. Live event or not in 2021? Find out the answer now. For most, doing a virtual event in 2020 was not an option. Government lockdowns didn't allow large gatherings. But as we plan for spring 2021, what will that bring? How do you decide whether to do a live event or not? This five-step process should help in that decision making. Step one, check the venue. If you're already booked for an event in 2021, find out all you can about your venue. Many sales and banquet staff were furloughed for most of 2020. Some are coming back, others are not. Find out who is covering for your banquet salesperson and when will they return and who's your point of contact now. Ask the following questions. Do you anticipate being open for spring 2021? If so, do you anticipate size reductions? 25, 50%. How will that work? Less people at a table, max six. Are you open to larger groups? Will you allow family and friends willing to sit closer to each other to max out at eight or 10? Will masks be required? Other safety precautions. Are you willing to waive my food and beverage minimum? In dealing with a hotel in Kansas City about six weeks ago, they were excited to get business for their hotel. They were willing to give up a lot to get us to do an event at their property. They reduced the ballroom capacity of 50%, but they also were willing to flex with us and sign a waiver to exempt the property from legal actions to allow us to go larger. Table maximums were six. If we signed a waiver, they'd be willing to go to eight to 10. But then they said the magic words to me, we will waive food and beverage minimum that was huge because it meant that they would not be holding us to a minimum size. We could hold the event with any number and they would be willing to not charge us for anything extra beyond what people ate. Those are the kinds of deals being offered in this day and age. If you have booked already for spring, find out what are my options if I have to cancel or if I have to change. Move to the fall, skip to 2022. If you're not booked yet, should you look at going into fall 2021 or should you look at switching to find out if it's available for spring of 2022? Just because the venue can accommodate your group and your size doesn't mean that anyone will actually attend. Step two, survey your board, table hosts, and major donors. Go to your key attendees, those you, are, you most want to your event and test the waters. Ask, if we had this uh, live event, knowing that we took every safety precaution possible, would you attend this event? This not only helps determine willingness to attend, it also gives the person ownership in the success of the event if they say yes, and also gives you a first tier potential table host. Be very careful to be sensitive when explaining options to partners. Don't appear to be pushing the event one way or the other, but let them know that you're moving forward cautiously taking every precaution and that you will pivot to a virtual event if need be. You don't want to appear to be putting money they're giving over their safety. Step three, moment of decision. If the venue says no to being open to space availability and or a majority of your key partners say no to a willingness to attend, then you'll have your decision already. You'll need to start planning for a virtual event. Remember, it's almost certain that not every donor will say yes to being able to attend. That will play a factor in your decision to have a portion live and a portion videotaped or live stream. Step four, proceed with caution. If both the venue and the donors say yes in favor of moving forward, then it's important to circle back with the venue and the donors. For the venue, 
lock in an available date and sign a contract if you have not done so already. For the donors, let them know the results of the informal survey. If someone says yes, that they would attend, ask if they would be willing to be a table host. Of course, that means filling a table. Will they recruit up to the limit that the venue allows or beyond that limit if it's acceptable with the property and we have to sign appropriate waivers for adding to 8 to 10? If the donor says no to being comfortable with attending, let them know the results of the informal survey but that you'll be contacting them as soon as you know, know more about the details, the date, the time, the links for the live stream during that event, or if the event will be pre-recorded and broadcast later. Step five, set goals and begin to process depending on capacity, restrictions for the venue, and set goals for number of hosts and total attendees. How many tables, six, eight, 10, will it take to reach your capacity goals? From October 15th to November 20th, recruit and get commitments from 50% of your table hosts. And that will start, you'll be able to start working with the people who have already said yes, they'd be willing to attend the event and they reported back with that decision. And move forward from there expanding to other potential hosts who are willing to bring family and friends will always help from there conduct your dinner as you normally would each year these are difficult times filled with much uncertainty will state by state restrictions continue for how long will there be a second wave all these are things you need to decide proceed with caution taking every necessary precaution and keep your hosts and your guests more informed than you do in a regular year. If restrictions continue or tighten or even loosen, make sure that you're keeping your partners and your donors notified. Be sensitive to where people are at, to their comfort level, their feelings, their fears, and their anxieties. Please have a safe and healthy event. I hope that you found this video helpful. If so, join me for our next video on the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. And as we near year end, please consider three video playlists that we've got out there, starting with the year end appeal strategies video featured above. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell to get the inside track on future videos, it's important that you subscribe to be on top of all these. And of course, as always, post a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there are things you want to hear about. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.